Sorry about the background noise. It's the air conditioner. Um, I draw. I drew a Fibonacci chart with 100%. Um, top area back from late 2018 in October and the bottom was the zero and I kind of think that the top 100% also transitions through some directional change areas it doesn't hit the top of the um, upward move where we broke the high from uh, October whatever it was of 2018 but these are energy transfers, you know, you get a little bit extended and then you want to pull back. And it pulls back to the 61.8 on the FIB. Um, I know there's a lot of lines here, so just bear with me. And I'll clear it up in a little bit. And then we pull back again, we can't get to it, we can't get to it, and then we push higher. And the extension brings us to the top low, which is 213, 214.92. So the 214.92 area is going to be an, ex an overextended area um, that I think we're going to, if we can keep this power going that we have in the, in the market, that's going to be a big area of closing resistance. Doesn't I mean we can't push through there. It means if we start to get above there um, on any weakness, that's where we're going to want to pull back to. There's also a channel top. Actually, the number I'm looking at, and let's remove the Fibonacci. And we're going to call this, we've done this before, we're going to call this our lower level upward bias channel support. You can see we've held it. These one day outliers aren't anything. We broke it. We returned to it. It became big resistance. And we blew through it. So fairly accurate line and one that we need to pull back to to be healthy, which depending on the time frame would be around 205 on the Qs. Then we have what I call the momentum line. And when we break the momentum line, we tended to go into these little quick, sharp corrections. Momentum line again, broke it, snap back, can't hold it, hit it. And we've shown this chart before. We bump along it, now we hold it. So this is a legitimate line here, it's an upward, trending line it's not a horizontal line like everybody else uses and we're off to the races now we start to break through on this big pullback that we've had and the energy is really strong off the first bounce <clears throat> pushes right through that line the line's really not important um, it gets important when you get into this area here because you have an open above it and a close right below it which precedes the big move down and this line just so happens to cross right over there you can see the battle right correct lower line battle pretty fair right pretty fair assessment open below it wants to fire up higher energy still down hit it and it hits that line on the bottom right before the pullback and now it hits it once twice three times and pushes through these are not horizontal supports that everybody else uses these are upper trajectory lines now how about this momentum line on the top we bounce through the lower line. Energy, energy, energy. Uh-oh, what are we going to do here? Indecision. And then we fail. We straddled it. That's the line we just hit today. We could have a short-term top in here looking for a pullback. This leg's overextended in my opinion. We'll see if I'm wrong. But I think a healthy pullback to the 204, 205 on the Qs is in order. I'm still short. And I think the short favors, you know... You know, the, the risk reward for me is better holding this short. Um, if we push through to the upside, God bless. I got a lot of longs too that'll help me out. They're not in the queues. Some of them are, some of them aren't. You know, I'm still holding Boston Scientific. I got stuff too that'll help me out. But I got to have a hedge here, and I think the market's topped out the queues in the short term.